Hi dancers, welcome to SKR Yoga and Wellness. My name is Sam, and today we are doing a yin class for spinal flexibility. So of course, this one is very self-explanatory. We're going to be holding a lot of poses and a lot of stretches that are really gonna work on our spine and on our backs and a little bit into the hips. So we're gonna go right ahead and get started. Uh, you will need two blocks for this practice or if you have two really thick or dense cushions or even a, uh, a yoga bolster might help as well for this practice. And we're gonna use one block right away coming all the way down onto your back, sliding this block underneath the hips. And then from here, just allow your left leg to straighten out underneath you. Right knee comes in towards your chest. And so we do need to use a little bit of muscle engagement through the arms here, but it's very minimal. So there's no gripping, no tension through the arms especially no tension through the shoulders or neck. Everything else is relaxing towards the floor. You wanna feel a lengthening through the front of your left hip. And as always, we're gonna breathe deeply here. Very gently release that right leg back down onto the mat. Bend your left knee in. And we're right away gonna go to the other side. So just stretching through your right leg. Bending your left knee in. 
Grab a hold of that knee and very gently guide it closer towards your chest. Remembering to keep the shoulders and neck relaxed. Lengthening, sending breath into the front of your right hip. And breathing as we settle in. Gently let that left foot fall back onto the mat. We'll remove the block from underneath the hips. We'll the spine to come back down flat onto the mat. And now from here we're going to lift the hips and place them over towards the right side of your mat. And then you want to try and extend your legs out towards the left corner and rotate your shoulders so they're also towards the right corner the left corner, sorry. So we're making kind of like a banana shape and this pose is aptly named banana pose. To intensify this stretch, you can cross your right leg over your left and we're gonna bring our hands just over the head, grabbing opposite elbows. And it might take a little bit of adjusting to fully find the stretch through your side body. We're aiming to feel a stretch in the side of that right hip, down the right leg, and all the way up towards the right armpit. It's important in this posture to keep both hips firmly on the floor so the right hip isn't lifting higher than the left. They're both flat. And we're just curving through 
the body, almost making a crescent moon shape. And again, settling in, finding your breath. to come out of this posture. Just release the arms down first, uncross the legs. Bring your, the soles of your feet back down onto the mat to recenter your hips and upper body. We're gonna go right away to the other side. So lifting the hips, sending them over to the left. Now send your legs over towards the right side of your mat. And upper body also over towards the right. And again, it might take a little bit just to find your curve to get settled into this posture. Again, if you'd like to make it a little bit harder, you can cross your left leg over your right as I am doing here. Remembering again to keep both hips on the floor, both shoulders on the floor. And breathing deep into this side body stretch. Getting comfortable. Gently make your way out of this posture. Release 
the arms and cross the legs. Bring the soles of your feet onto the mat to center your hips and upper body. And we'll very gently make our way up to a seated position. You can use your hands to help you. Sitting up tall on your sit bones, bring the soles of your feet together. We're gonna inhale here to grow nice and tall through the spine in the seated pose. And then on the exhale, just let your spine curve forward. And from here, allow the weight of your head to really pull you forward into this fold. You can relax your shoulder blades down your back. Try not to engage through the neck at all here. You really want to let gravity do the work and let the weight of your head be what pulls you farther into the stretch. So we're not pulling ourselves down or pushing against the floor here. Just totally hanging in this space and breathing for a couple of minutes. Gently use your hands to help push you back up into a seated position. Rolling up through the spine. And from here, we'll bring the knees back together, making our way onto our bellies. Just coming forward on the mat. Getting comfortable. And then we're going to come up onto the forearms here into sphinx pose. So the closer you bring your elbows to your body, the more intense of a stretch this will be. If you would like to make it a bit easier for yourself, you can walk the forearms a bit farther away. 
It just depends on where you would like to feel the stretch through your spine. I'm gonna bring them a little bit closer today. Make sure we're pushing the shoulders away from the ears, creating space for the neck. Breathing deeply. You can feel your belly expand and contract into the mat here in Sphinx Pose. You could stay here in this seal pose, or if you'd like to progress further, we're going to come up onto the palms. So bringing the palms towards the corners of your mat, pushing against the floor to prop yourself up, just finding a deeper back bend for the last minute or so. And of course, if this feels too intense, you can always come back to Sphinx pose with your elbows on the floor. Whatever posture you're in, make sure your shoulders are still plugging away from your ears, leaving space for your neck. And breathing deeply. Gently let yourself roll back down onto the mat, nice and slow. Just take a second to rest your forehead into your hands. Just allow your spine to recalibrate as it's flat on the floor. And then on your own time, you're going to push yourself back into a child's pose. This time bringing the knees together and toes together. And then just let your spine curl over top of those legs. Your arms can go behind you. So now just allowing your spine to curve in the opposite direction. 
We'll be here for about a minute. Gently push yourself back up to a seated position. We're going to swing the legs in front of us. And I'm going to come into a shoulder stand. So bringing the feet up over the head. We're only going to be in our shoulder stand position for about a minute. Um, but if this is something that you don't usually practice or if it causes too much tension, for the neck or if it's too difficult to breathe, you can come into a supported bridge pose. So keeping your feet on the floor, just sliding a block underneath your low back, just like we did to start the class, and just hold that position for the minute before we progress further. So I'm gonna go ahead and roll my way up into shoulder stand. And then, I'm going to extend my legs out towards the floor. It's all right if your toes don't touch all the way towards the floor behind you, but that is the goal we're, we're striving towards. As I mentioned, we're only gonna be here for about a minute, not too long, because this is a fairly intense posture for the spine. Remember to breathe here. And again, if your breath is constricted, come into that supported bridge pose. Otherwise, we'll continue to breathe here and snail. Now very gently, with lots of control, you can bend through those knees, allow your spine to slowly roll back out onto the mat. I'm using my hands to help me, coming all the way down. Just take a second to plant your feet on the floor, feel your spine nice and flat against your mat. Allowing yourself to recalibrate that extreme flexion. And we have one final posture before Shavasana, and this is going to be a supported fish pose. So you're going to need both of your blocks for this. You will want to place one block parallel to the short edge of your mat for your head and the other block in the other direction. 
I have mine on the second level, but you can also flip them to be on their lowest level if that's more comfortable. You can also use a really dense uh, pillow or if you have a yoga bolster, that will work for this pose as well. And how we're gonna lower into this is you want this second block to be right between your shoulder blades and then the top block is going to rest underneath your head. And now in this position, to make it a little bit more challenging, you can open up your knees as I am here or you can extend the legs out. So whatever variation you choose, just come into that now. And I invite you to let your arms rest by your sides with your palms facing forward. As an option, if you'd like to bring this more into the chest to open up through the arms, you can extend the arms up overhead. This is a little bit too intense for me today, so I'm gonna keep my arms down. But again, you choose what variation works best for you. We'll be here for a couple of minutes. There's no need for any muscular activation here. Everything should be melting into your blocks and into the mat. Breathing deeply as always. With your knees more open, bring the soles of your feet back onto the mat. If your arms were overhead, bring them back. Tuck the chin to move that first block, and then use your hands and elbows to help walk yourself off of that second block. And we're going to lower all the way down into Shavasana. So allowing the spine to be flat on the floor. Arms and legs are taking up space, opening wide. Take a moment to feel how your spine, if there's any sensations through your spine here as we lie on the floor. 
With our spine in this neutral place, do you notice any areas of length? Remember that there's no right or wrong answers as we observe these sensations. Just making note and just checking in with how our spine is feeling after some of those very intense postures. We'll be here for another few minutes. Settling in. your body, wiggling fingers and toes, let your head fall from side to side, maybe turning those legs in and out, when you're ready, rolling onto your right side, taking one breath, and then pushing yourself up into a seated position. Let's just take a moment in this seated position to really feel your sit bones on the floor. And take a moment to feel that nice elongated spine after all of that hard work. 
And we'll bring our hands together in front of your heart, bending forward. Namaste. Thank you so much, dancers, for doing this practice with me. I hope your spine feels really lengthened and nice and flexible. Please do give this video a thumbs up and do subscribe to my channel. It really does mean a lot to me. And that's all for today. Thank you once again for doing this practice with me, and I'll see you on the mat again soon.